Rank second in the division. Do you believe this fight is a title eliminator on Saturday night? Um, I would hope so. I mean, I don't know who else I'd have to fight. You know, it just would seem redundant to fight the whoever wins between uh, Kat and Chris. So, who do you think wins that matchup? Um, I think it's going to be a really close fight. I think that the jiu-jitsu skills of Kat and the striking skills of Cyborg, like, um. It's going to be a good struggle for who can impose their game plan. So, I mean, after my fight, I'm really excited to watch that fight. <laughs> and then your opponent, uh, Leah McCourt, is going to have an advantage in reach. Do you think that's going to matter at all on Saturday night? Uh, I, I think that most of my opponents have had an advantage in reach. Um, but I'm usually trying to get to their legs, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sarah, how are you doing? Good. What can you tell me about your treatment within the promotion, how happy you are to be not only on the Bellator Historic 300th card, but just in this promotion in Bellator? Um, everything has been um, really wonderful since I transferred over. Uh, everybody's been super professional. I mean, it really, besides seeing like different people and meeting different personalities, everything else has seemed pretty the same as far as like quality. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell me about Jimmy Fowler, what he's meant to you, how he's helped you and influenced you throughout your mixed martial arts career? Uh, Jimmy's been with me uh, since I was my second amateur fight. So essentially my entire MMA career. Um, he's one of my closest friends. Uh, and if I hadn't had his guidance, if I hadn't had him pushing me in the room, if I hadn't had his um, just help in every area that a coach or a friend can be, I just don't think I would have stuck with it as long and I wouldn't have developed into the fighter I am. I wanted to ask about one more guy, Chad. How do you say his last name? Bingham? Bingham. Chad Bingham. What has he meant to you? Of course, that is your husband, but just having that support base, having someone that, having a husband that knows about the fight game, knows what it goes in, what goes out, just having that rock, how, how, how much does that help you? How important is that to you? Uh, that's tremendous, especially when it comes to like um, mentally preparing. So I had already been fighting a long time before him and I had met, um, but knowing that everything's taken care of, knowing that somebody is in your corner and supports you and loves you no matter what, I think that allows me to go out and fight and be truly free to perform to my best. Mm -hmm. You've traveled all over the world doing so many different things, it's hard to keep up at a certain point. Now you're here in San Diego though. I was wondering, what's your favorite city that you've ever fought? Not city you've been to, but somewhere you fought, your favorite place. Um, let's see, that's kind of tough. I mean, I, I will have to say Hawaii. I fought in Hawaii three times and I loved it every single time. Um, they bring like a really wonderful like fighting spirit to it and uh, it just makes ev the fight like really cool and really special. Mm -hmm. Hey Sarah, so Lee is a very young and hungry competitor. What did you think about her last fight against Kat? It was a really close competitive fight. Um, I thought uh, she's made improvements in her game. Um, and I thought that, you know, like that fight was probably one of the, the best fights she's had. So just I anticipate that she's growing and then I'll see an even better version. So that's what I'm preparing for. You just beat be one of the top ranked girls in Bellator. This is another one of the top ranked girls in Bellator. Do you feel like a win here definitely just guarantees that title shot next? Yeah, yeah. I, I would assume that I would be the next one. I just don't know what else I would have to do with that. So, you know, I mean, coming into the promotion, like not, not to take anything away, but I really feel like Arlene was like, it's one of the best fighters in this promotion and to fight her right out of the gates at a new weight class, like that, I shouldn't have to fight another fight to, to be a title contender because of my history in the UFC and, um, and the way that fight went, you know? I mean, she's really, really tough. She beats 99% of the girls at 145 and um, that was a big win for me, so. So you fought in many different promotions over the years with many different fight kits, but those gold gloves have to be some of the best you've ever worn, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And they're super comfortable, which is really important to a fighter. Like, they're comfortable and they're cool looking. Talk about your Bellator debut there, uh, fighting at Featherweight. You fought primarily in the UFC at Bantamweight. Uh, how different is it, uh, not having to cut that extra weight? Like, uh, is, have you noticed a difference in the weight classes? Oh, absolutely. Um, I didn't, no, until I started prepping for some of the bigger girls that in my training, all I have is like most of my, the girls I go with are larger than me. So I was like, wow, I've already been doing this. Like all of my training partners are taller than me or bigger than me. So 
that had already been, you know, like what I was accustomed to. But as far as my energy wise, as far as my uh, motor skills and everything, like it's a humongous difference when it gets to the later parts of the rounds. So I'm, I'm really, really happy about that. You mentioned it there. You fought the who's who in MMA. Uh, there is a big experience gap here in terms of who you fought and just even the overall fights. Uh, how much will that play into Saturday's matchup? Uh, I think that um, it's not just like who I fought. It's probably more what I've learned. Um, and so every single fight, win or lose, I go back, I analyze it, I I keep the things that that went really well. I adapt to the things that, that didn't go very well. So just having more fights and having better opponents reveal more errors or holes or mistakes, it's given me the opportunity to grow more. And uh, do you still pay attention to what's going on in the UFC's bantamweight division at all? Because obviously the title's vacant now with Amanda retiring earlier this year. So I, I honestly, like this is probably embarrassing, but I don't pay that much attention to fighting in general and I haven't most of my career, mm -hmm. I really love to do fighting. Mm -hmm. I love to train fighting. I love to compete in fighting. But I've never been a huge MMA fan, so I've never paid as much attention to all of the the drama, all of the stories, mm -hmm. all of, you know, and then then what's being said and this. So I I didn't like. I just I'm very focused on who's in front of me and what I need to do and how I can grow as an athlete. And that's kind of all I pay attention to. No, I like the honesty. Um, and just last one for me, um, what does it mean to be a part? You've, you've been a part of a lot of big cards in your career, and this one's pretty awesome. And there's you know two women's title fights on here. Like, how cool is it to be a part of this card? So coming up from like the earliest times in women's fighting and how far we've come and having you know two women's title fights and um, seeing how much these promotions are just supporting and backing women's fighting, it's just... It is, it's really special to me, and I'm really happy to be a part of it. What's up, Sarah? You, as a fighter, have something kind of unique. Um, you've, been in Olymp you've been in the Olympics before. Obviously, there's other fighters that have too. However, what are some of the similarities, differences that you see when you're training for an MMA fight versus the Olympics? Uh, well, for an MMA fight, there is a lot of... Um, I wouldn't, I'd say like, like urgency and stress and almost like training to protect yourself from being injured is just a different ball game than training for a skill in a sport. Um, but as far as the Olympics, there is nothing in the world that can ever, ever compare to the pressure that is on an athlete when they compete in the Olympics. And it's an, and as much as I try to imagine it, having wrestled in world championships, um, it just was its own complete experience and going through there and like in wrestling really well and you know earning a medal um it was just a uh, it's so difficult to do it's just so unbelievably difficult so in fighting i just have never met that type of pressure again it's just been the the cream of the crop the epitome of pressure in the olympics and so how do you feel that the olympics being gone or going through that has helped you become the mixed martial artist that you are? I think that it taught me a lot about myself and it taught me how to, that I really could trust myself under pressure. That whatever the situation, when pressure is applied to me in an almost crippling degree, I was able to bring my skills out. I like that, that's a great answer. Last one from me, I saw that you made a trip to the Dead Sea recently, a couple <laughs> months ago. Yeah. What'd you think about your experiences there? Oh, it was a phenomenal trip. Um, I went there because I was coaching the uh, U20 uh, women's wrestling world team. Um, and actually after this fight, I'm gonna go and help with the U23 world team. If I didn't have this fight, then I would have already been at the senior, <laughs> the senior level helping with women's wrestling. And so um, getting to go to places like Jordan, I'll be going to Albania, like all of these places, like it, it's just really like unforgettable experiences. So it was really cool. We, like. You know, I've never been in water that I just naturally floated in, so <laughs> it was really awesome.